Neutral density filters are designed to reduce the volume of light that enters your lens without messing up the color or the contrast of your shot. That's why they're called neutral density filters. But they're far from neutral. They always mess up your color, they usually mess up your contrast, and of course there's always a sharpness reduction anytime you use a filter. And what's the deal with the little numbering systems that they have? Wow. I know that neutral density filters can be tricky little buggers, and I know they also intimidate a lot of photographers. Well, I can tell you I've been using ND filters for 35 years on 4x5 cameras, on medium format film and digital cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless cameras. I use them all the time. I am so happy to demystify everything you need to know about using and choosing neutral density filters. Neutral density filters are a lot like sunglasses for your lens. They come in a wide variety of styles and shapes and colors and different materials and of course a wide variety of price. But they all do the same thing. They reduce the amount of volume of light that goes into your camera system. Now, you can buy two different types of ND filters. There's fixed and variable density. A fixed density ND filter is easy. You buy one filter, it does one reduction task. Say you want a one-stop neutral density filter, you can buy a one-stop ND, put it on, you're going to remove one stop of light, that's its whole job. There's also variable ND filters, which allow you to rotate the filter to adjust how much light you actually want to absorb into the filter and prevent from going into the camera. Sounds simple, right? Why are these things so intimidating? So why is a simple two-stop ND filter labeled by one manufacturer as an ND 0.6 filter, and another one says, oh no, 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 that's an ND 102 filter. And a third one says, oh no, no, that's a filter factor four filter, when actually it's a two-stop ND filter. Well, most of that is a bunch of baloney anyway, but there is one scale we do have to pay attention to. That's the optical density number, and that's a scientific scale that's all about density units. Think of it as the resistance to light as it passes through the filter. Now, a one-stop ND filter has an optical density number of 0.3. And every time you want to add another stop of neutral density, you just add another 0.3. So a two-stop ND filter is going to be a 0.6. A three-stop is going to be a 0.9. A four-stop is going to be a 1.2. There it is. There's the complete secret to translating from, <laughs> from optical density units into f-stops. Now, we're photographers. We think in shutter speeds and f-stops. We don't think in density units. So how about now that you know the secret, let's move on through the rest of this video just using f-stops for our exposure reference. You can convert them into density units all you want to. There's online calculators if you want to do the rest of it. If you like to do that stuff, that's good on you. I like to keep it really simple and go make good pictures. Deal? Deal. Most photographers prefer variable ND filters that are made up of two ND filters in one rotating ring that has a set of benchmark dots along the edge. The first dot usually means less light reduction, and the last dot usually means maximum light reduction, depending on what your filter is. Now, not all ND filters are made the same, but one thing you do have to know about all variable ND filters, those little dots along the edge, yeah, they don't mean anything in particular. Keep in mind that ND filters are very difficult to manufacture, so you'll see a difference in the little dot settings from brand to brand and even from batch to batch from the same manufacturer. You will need to do your own testing on your own variable ND filter so you know where to set it to get the correct exposure compensation you're looking for. Now, it, it's a complicated process, but I've got an entire video dedicated to how to calibrate your neutral density filter so that you know where to set it next time you need a three-stop light reduction. You'll know how to set your variable ND to get exactly 3.0 stops of light reduction. 
All filters lower sharpness and alter contrast and also shift color, some a little bit, some a lot of it. That's called image degradation. It's just a fact of life of using filters. You will find though that typically the premium, higher quality filters offer less image degradation and the cheap eBay filters are gonna offer more image degradation. ND filters come in three basic types. There's the gelatin filter, there's the screw-in glass style filter, and there's the optical grade plastic. Each one of these are gonna have their pros and cons, but here's the scoop that you need to know. The type of filter that offers the least amount of image degradation to your photograph is going to be the gelatin style. Now these are thin, flexible, super delicate sheets, big sheets that are made in a big fancy laboratory to scientific proportions. Then they just cut them down to the size that you need to buy. So you can buy eight by 10 down to four by four, whatever you want. The problem is they're really a pain in the butt to shoot with. They are delicate, the wind tends to blow them around, the slightest fingerprint or scratch could ruin them, and even the tiniest bit of water is just devastating to a gelatin filter. Now a glass ND filter is just a gelatin filter in a glass sandwich. The quality of the glass is kind of what you pay for along with the coatings that are on the glass too, but they can be a little bit expensive you might want to take a look at the optical grade plastic filters. Now they are a lot lighter weight than glass. They're less expensive. They're much more durable. I mean, you can even get mud on plastic filters and wash them off and you're good to go. Plus, plastic filters come in a wide variety of graduated filters too. So to recap, plastic is the least expensive, but it damages your image the most. Gelatin filters damage your image the least, but they're really difficult to use. That makes glass filters the champion because relatively easy to take care of and they do a really good job. The best quality ND filters are found in the motion picture industry, where you can spend $9,000 if you want to on the Cinefade from Airy and get the most control over your variable neutral density filtration values you would ever want. Now, realistically, there are much better choices for your typical hybrid photographer like myself that shoots both photo and video. I can tell you from personal experience that I've been using a lot of large filter sizes and I know large filters can be expensive. It does pay to buy the best quality filters you can afford, it really does. Particularly with neutral density filters and polarizing filters. There are a few brands that I rely on all the time. The first one would be Heliopan, next would be Singray, Next would be B plus W. I'll buy any filters of those folks that they have and be very happy with them. Anytime you put a filter in your image pathway, you're going to reduce your image quality. Remember, a little bit on some, a lot on others. The reason is when light travels through the air and it hits the front surface of your filter, it bends. Then it travels through the glass and then it's got to go through air again where it bends back. Reducing that amount of light bend is where the quality optics come from and that's why the price tag of some of the filters are kind of high. That's also the same reason that high quality camera lenses are expensive. It's not just the design and the quality of the glass, it's the quality of the coatings on the glass and that's what you pay for. To test the low cost NDs versus the more premium ones, let's set up a standard lens sharpness target that I use for all kinds of different things. And first, I'll show you what the target looks like. That's with no filtration, by the way, that's just the premium camera lens. Here's a four stop compensation on a B plus W, that's a premium filter. You can see it's lost a little bit of sharpness, but not much. And Here's the $13 low cost eBay variable ND filter also set to four stops. Ew, boogers. So these two filters do the same thing. Yeah, not really, right? They both reduce your light by four stops, but one of them's gonna make it really not so sharp and the other one you can barely see the difference. Of all the neutral density filters I've used over my 40 year career, I've never come across one that didn't have a color shift. Now, some of those color shifts are so small, you're probably not gonna see them. But remember, I do a lot of portraits with ND filters and color accuracy is kind of why my clients hire me. Well, you need to realize that lower cost 
ND filters are probably going to have a greater color shift than premium ones. And you will also find out that variable neutral density filters always have a color shift. It may be super small, it may be something you have to deal with. Most of the time I find I'm so picky about color, we're gonna have to deal with it. But how do we fix the color shift of an ND filter? You've got the most powerful filter control cleaning system ever inside your camera. Custom white balance. Once you get your exposure set with your filter compensations from your ND filter, you run a custom white balance with the course with the filter on your camera. You will neutralize whatever color shift there is and you're back in business. Now, those of you that aren't familiar with custom white balance, read your camera's instruction manual. It will tell you how to do it. I always suggest using a white card or a gray card. Don't use the ones that screw on the front of your lens. Those are garbage. What you'll find out is some cameras will react better with a gray card, some with a white card. I use the pop-up one from Last Delight called Easy Balance. Transparency here. I did have a hand in inventing that product, but it works great for me. I mean, I helped make it, so it works great for me. But you can get just the cheapy gray cards if you want to, gray on one side, white on one side, and then these will give you another one that's gray and black. Or if you can afford it, get the x right brand. Nothing is better for color controls than the x right brand, gray cards, white cards, whatever. Try it with your camera, gray, white, see which one gives you cleaner colors, then just run with it. Really, nothing is more powerful than custom white balance when it comes to getting rid of color shift from ND filters. Try it and see. High quality neutral density filters are expensive and the larger size that you get, the more expensive they are too. So what size do you get? Do you get one for each one of your lenses? Oh, heck no. What you wanna do is spend your money on a premium quality filter, but buy the largest one you're going to need, really need in the shoots you're gonna do. For instance, right now my current setup is the Fuji X series that gets the bulk of my work. The three lenses that I need have three different sizes. So I'm gonna buy the biggest one, which is 77 millimeters. The other two are a 72 and a 62 millimeter. So I'll just use step down rings in order to make them fit. Also, do yourself a favor, you're accidentally going to over tighten these rings or even the filter onto your lens Buy the lens wrench. The cheapy, the, even the cheapy ones are just fine. Store it with your filters because particularly if you put your VND and your step down rings on at home in the warm climate, then you go somewhere cold, that shrinking of the metal will lock that son of a gun in place and you will break it <laughs> trying to take it off because I have. Some lens manufacturers offer the option of a drop-in neutral density filter. I've got buddies that shoot Canon lenses a lot and they love these small little drop-in NDs. Works like a champ. Plus, regarding optical quality, you'll actually get better optical quality, less image degradation if you mount the filter on the back of your lens or in the middle of your lens's image pathway. All right, enough science, right? But here's a bad idea. I don't think you should do this at all. Don't tape a neutral density filter on the back of your DSLR or mirrorless cameras. This is guaranteed one day that tape's gonna let loose and you're gonna wipe out a mirror if you're using a DSLR. You're gonna wipe out a shutter. You might lunch your entire camera body. Bad idea, don't do it. Are polarizers and ND filters the same thing? Nope, two different filters. Polarizers reduce, actually absorb, different wavelengths of light depending on how you rotate them. A variable ND, in fact, doesn't. It just gets rid of the complete volume, all different wavelengths alike, depending on how you rotate them. So it is possible you can use a polarizer in place of an ND if you don't have an ND, but when you need an ND, you need an ND, so buy an ND. Variable NDs are known to cause vignetting on wide and super wide lenses. Now, my 16 to 55 that I use on my Fuji X series hasn't shown any signs of vignetting when I use a premium quality VND. Now, I can see when I use my 14 millimeter lens with that same VND, I do see a little bit of the corners getting darker. So, heads up when using really wide lenses or really cheap VNDs for vignetting. 
You know, when you reduce the amount of light entering your lens by say five stops, you're really choking off your autofocus system. I can tell you I've seen more ND filters affect the autofocus of DSLRs than I do find of mirrorless and of course also of video cameras. Once again, better quality neutral density filter gives you least amount of autofocus problems. And if you're shooting wide open, like I tend to do right here, I'm using autofocus wide open, no ND filter, but I rely on that autofocus system. I'd be a little reluctant with a five stop ND filter shooting wide open, even on this camera. Here's the best tip I'm gonna give you today. I love to use neutral densities for outdoor portraits here in California. It's, I just love to do it, it's so much fun. But I'm really picky about my JPEGs. I'm a JPEG shooter predominantly, and I want perfect exposures and perfect color and everything else all set up in the camera so that I can avoid post-processing because I'm allergic to Photoshop and Lightroom. I, I just break out in hives, I hate this stuff. So here's what I do. When I pull out my variable neutral density filter and I need a three stop comp, let's say, I'll adjust that little ring for my three stop setting because I've tested it and I know it's exactly three stops, but it is 3.0 stops. I don't even want one tenth of a problem with any filter, particularly a VND. So when I get it set up, I'm gonna put a small strip of Gorilla Tape right on the ring to lock it from moving. One on one side, one on the other side. Now Gorilla Tape, you can get on Amazon, you can get it at any hardware store. It's waterproof, super heavy duty tape. It doesn't leave a lot of, you know, little boogers and stuff behind. It's okay for photo stuff. Then after I get it locked down, I screw it onto my lens opening. Then I'm gonna set my exposure with my meter. I'm gonna put the three stop comp right into my meter so I don't have to worry about it. I'll make my exposure readings. I will set my camera. I'll pull a fresh custom white balance because even premium VNDs are gonna have a color shift. Custom white balance gets rid of it, completely neutralizes it. Then I'm totally ready to go except for my lens hood. The times that I've gone without a lens hood, I've regretted it every time. I don't buy adapters to go on the filter to attach the lens hood. That's way too much work. I'm just gonna use Gorilla Tape and I'm gonna Gorilla Tape my lens hood on the top and the bottom. So that means I've got left and right. I've got Gorilla Tape holding my ring from rotating and then top and bottom, I've got two more. There's no way that ring's gonna rotate and there's no way my lens hood's gonna fall off and I'm gonna get a great picture, darn it.